at Neil Foster. It all began with an unidentified body in a hotel room. We needed permission from the next of kin for an autopsy. So the mystery man's picture went into the afternoon papers, and we waited to see who'd claim him. Although he was a corpse, he had the power to hurt and go on hurt. For show. In my entire career, this was the first time I had ever seen a dangerous dead man. <laughs> Theater 5 presents A Little Knowledge. Martha? Martha, are you home? Annie, is that you? Yes. Come on in. I have some nice non fattening coffee, please. Are you alone? Well, till school lets out. You ought to lock your door. Anyone might walk in. Good. I'm lonesome. Have you seen the paper today? No, not yet. But sit down, Annie. You sit down. Maybe it would be better if I read this to you. Well, why all the mystery? Oh, Martha, listen. Do you know this man? Mystery death in hotel room. Anyone having information about this man should telephone police at... Let me see. Malcolm? Malcolm? The man is dead? Cry. Cry, let yourself go, even for him. Malcolm, my husband. Dead alone in a hotel room. Yes, but what was he doing there when he should have been home? Who gave him permission to walk in and out of your life for years and years? Where was he the last two months without a word? I don't know. I don't care. Not important now. He's dead. I wish you would cry. I wish even I could cry, but I couldn't forgive him. Pray you'll forgive me. For what? For being too good a wife? Stop now, no more of that. Not ever again. Malcolm is dead. So close my big mouth. Oh, Annie, don't be angry. You're a good friend. I, I need your understanding. I wish I did understand you. But I love you. Like a little daughter. I'll call the police. You don't have to do that, at least. Oh, don't call them. Well, they have to find out who Malcolm is. And I'll go with you to talk to them. You won't be alone. Tina. Oh, I almost forgot her. I'd better wait here. That'll be another heartbreak. Oh. Now, now don't think. Now, lie down here. Let me cover your legs. Now, try not to think. Just rest. There's nothing more you can do for Malcolm. It's been done. Yes, yeah, it's done. Malcolm? If you can hear me, try to understand why I did it, Malcolm. I couldn't let you go, my love. I couldn't let you go. I don't know, uh, Steve. Uh, it's hard to say how much longer we'll be tied up on this one. Tell me, what do you think of the uh, widow? What's her name? Uh, Martha Haggard. Well, what do you think? Well, she's little, kind of lost and scared, but there's something more. She identified the body as Malcolm Haggard. He carried no insurance, owed no large sums of money, had done nothing obviously wrong, but there's something is wrong. I can feel it. Little Martha's evading me. Well, the faster she signs for that autopsy, the sooner we'll know why. Uh huh. Well, call her in. I'll try it again. My way. <laughs> I met my husband at the complaint counter of a department store. I was having trouble retaining a purchase, and Malcolm took charge. I'm always inadequate in situations like that. I'm dependent and passive psychologically. Who told you? Malcolm. He used to meet people like me in his work every day. What work is that? Malcolm gave character tests for Hale, Wingate, and Zacharias. Mm -hmm. They used his findings to decide whether people applying for jobs should be hired, whether they were psychologically right. Uh, he was considered an expert on personality classification. So your janitor says that he hadn't been living at home. The janitor's wrong. It, it was Malcolm's habit to change his environment from time to time. When he felt pressured or creatively stifled, he would go away for a while. But he always sent me money, and he always came home. Except this time. And did he often feel uh, pressured? He said so. Which pressure made him commit suicide? You know he committed suicide? No, we don't. 
There's not a mark on him, is there? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Takeless. We are unable to determine the cause of your husband's death until we perform an autopsy. And we need your authorization. Uh, sign right here, please. You will find it suicide. Or what the law calls suicide. But it's murder. And I did it. Huh? I didn't kill him outright. I killed him by inches. A little bit at a time. It's okay that I clung to him and refused to set him free. Well, he wanted to divorce you? Well, I'm sure he did. Look at me. What do you see? Could you give a description of me? Malcolm once called me a little brown wren. Like so many other things he said, it was cruel, but accurate. A little brown wren, that's me. Afraid of situations, shy with people. Just the opposite of what my husband wanted and needed in a woman. He didn't tell you that. He didn't need to. I saw the things he admired in other women. This one met life on its own terms. That one was courageous and emancipated. Another one was witty and smart. He wanted a partner and equal. Am I tall? He loved tall women. Am I glamorous? <laughs> That's funny. Am I redheaded? Do I have any of the qualities he admires? <laughs> That's why he stayed away from me when I decided to possess him. No. That's the truth. Listen, I loved him with a selfish love. A love not big enough to let him go. I, I could sense his unhappiness. And I'm not surprised he took the only way out that was left. Now, do you want the murderers to sign the permission for an autopsy? Uh, Foster, uh, can I bother you a minute? Uh, yeah, come in. Uh, There's someone out there who insists on seeing you right away. All right, uh, take uh, Mrs. Haggard into the next room. There's a couch in there. And uh, don't worry, uh, Mrs. Haggard. I'm sure everything will be all right. Oh, this way, Mrs. Haggard. I'll be right with you, Neil. Yeah. Come in. Are you Detective Foster? Yes. Your sidekick took my address and told me to wait across the hall, but that was a long time ago. Now, what can I do for you? It's the other way around. I came to do something for you, and I had a hard time finding you. They sent me from department to department. Now, what's the idea? I don't know, Miss. Well, you asked me to come in. In reference to what? In reference to the picture in this afternoon's paper. The mystery man. And it's not Miss. It's Mrs. Mrs. Malcolm Haggard, the wife. And the widow. For more than two million Americans, over half of them children, life is a prison. They've committed no crime, and the walls that they live behind are invisible, but they're in prison just as surely as any criminal. And this is Dunbar KGO with the story. Who are these two million Americans? Well, they're victims of epilepsy, one of man's oldest and least understood disorders. These epilepsy patients live behind the wall of ignorance and fear and superstition. Medical science has now made it possible for most persons with epilepsy to lead normal, active lives. But because of the stigma that attaches itself to the very mention of the word epilepsy, they're often afraid to tell even their closest friends about their condition. Now, you can help dispel the cloud of ignorance and fear that surrounds epilepsy by getting all the facts now during Epilepsy Information Month. For free information, write to Epilepsy Foundation, Washington, D.C. Hey, hello, my friend. It's Mark, the Magnificent. Reminding you to bring the bat wing down to fly the tunnel leave. Saturday, a KTO from 8.30 till half past 10 p.m. It's dreadful mystery time. Real horrible radio. Guarantee to upset your stomach. Preserve the thing. understand your attitude. Now, I've shown you all the cards in my wallet. I've proved who I am, and I'm upsetting you. Now, why? I'm the one who should be upset. Where's my husband's body? Why haven't you taken me to see him? He uh, isn't here. He's already been identified by a relative. In this town? I never knew Malcolm had any family here. Mrs. Haggard, how much did you know about your husband? 
I'm not here to be questioned. I'm here for answers. Now, what about Malcolm? What happened? How did he die? Well, we think it's suicide. I don't. Not Malcolm. Did you check his wallet? Maybe he was robbed and killed. No. Well, you seem to have made up your mind pretty fast. I think I'd better get a lawyer before I talk oh, anymore. Well, will you calm down, Mr. Sager? Nobody's hiding anything. We just don't know. If you sign an order authorizing an order... Oh, wait a minute. Cut him up? Oh, Lord, no. I can't. I can't. Not my Malcolm. I... I think I'm going to stick. Oh, I'm going to water it. I'm sure it is. Here. Thank you. Is that better? Yes, yes. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I came on so strong. That's right. If you knew how I felt when I saw his picture in the paper. The pit of my stomach was like an elevator going up. I know I don't look like everybody's idea of a grieving widow, but that's what I am. He was the only person who ever took an interest in me, in the real me. Oh, I know how I look. Men like it, but that's business. You see, I was a model, and now I'm trying to be an actress. I was a blonde, and now I'm a redhead. I was dressing until I met my husband. Dressing? A shipwreck. A couple of times. But Malcolm explained it. He, he explained me to myself psychologically. And it made so much sense. I was learning from him or, or trying to. I, oh, why am I talking? I want to see him. I don't care if you have him packed in ice in a drawer. I want to see him. And I want to see who identified him. That was my right, mine. But we had no way of knowing that he was married to you. Well, didn't the relative tell you? Oh, I was right. Something's rotten in the setup. I want to see Malcolm. I'll stand here and I'll yell until I do. You hear that? You hear that? What's wrong? He's screaming. Is it something about Malcolm? Malcolm? Yes, yes, it's about Malcolm. The guest trouble here won't let me see my husband's body. And now I demand somebody call Charlie King. He's my lawyer. Who are you? I'm Lila Haggard. Mrs. Malcolm Haggard. And I'll scream it until I get some action. Must be some mistake. Are you all right, Mrs. Haggard? What? Uh, are you talking to me? Uh, or her? <laughs> this is it. Ladies, uh, Martha, Lila, you're both married to the same man, or were. Whatever else Malcolm Haggard may have been, he was a bigamist. Uh, you're, you're... You're saying he was married to her? My husband, Malcolm? Why, you'll eat those lies in court when I see my lawyer. I'd advise you to see him. Find out where you stand. Why don't you tell her that? She's the one making up lies. Mrs. Heckert, when were you married to Malcolm? Why should I tell you? I need to know. I'll bet you do. Then you'll claim you were married first. I don't believe you ever knew my husband. He has a clear scar below his left shoulder. It's like a half moon. He fell through a window as a child and had 12 stitches in his... No. Yes. When he was annoyed, he would play a Brahms concerto over and over again till you wanted to break the record. He wouldn't eat rye bread. He, he wouldn't wear darn socks. He read late at night, always psychology books. But did he ever let you dust those books or arrange them? You know he didn't. I'm not listening. Oh, yes, you are. You know I'm Malcolm's wife, too. We had a long time together. He married me 12 years ago. When did he marry you? Tell me. All right, I'll wait. Please don't take everything away from me. Leave me something. You're tall and you're, you're beautiful. You're confident. I know why he wanted you. But man wouldn't. I can't compete with you. I, I wouldn't even try. But, oh, I've got to know when he married you. Let me at least have that. Oh, please, Mrs. Haggard, don't. Oh, you think she has a prior claim, too, huh? But she's not sure. Look at her. Shaking, trembling. I beg you, I believe you. I'm going home. And don't you try to get in touch with me, or I'll have you arrested in spite of your detective friends. You little one, you get away with murder, but not this time. I won't sign anything, and I won't give permission, and I won't tell you anything. And you're stuck on it, too. You'll have to leave it just the way it is. In a mess. Well, that costs much on you. Oh, don't let her go. Don't bring her back. She won't tell you anything. 
But if they were married in this town, we'll find out when it happened. Suppose they were married somewhere else. I can't wait until you track that down. I can't wait a minute. Oh, the child. She is my daughter. But what else is she? Has she a father to call her own? Has she a name? Can you tell me that? Oh, Jimmy, you see you. I must find out. <laughs> Oh, it's you. Get out. No, get me in, please. Get. Uh, where did you find me? I'm not in the phone book. All those dirty, rotten police detectives. Well, you're in. How do you like it? Our play. Mine and Malcolm's. Malcolm liked these colors. He used them well. Yeah, he said I had a creative flair. <laughs> I thought he never said that to you. Mrs. Hedges. I'll oh, cut it out. You just want me to call you that. And I won't play games. Lyle, I have something to tell you. I don't want you to be angry with me. No? Well, I'm not handing out forgiveness. That's your bit. Saint Martha. Sweet Martha the Martyr. Look at this picture. She inherited Malcolm's face. Lucky she got his instead of mine. <laughs> you kidding? This is our child, Tina. She's good in school. One of her teachers thinks she can apply for an art training scholarship. Tina's going to be somebody one day. But all she needs is self-confidence. She found out about Malcolm's death in school. Isn't that horrible? This is the beginning of such a hard time for her. Please don't add to her handicap. Don't poison her life. Why not? Mine's gone down the drain. But this is only a child. Isn't it enough that her father's dead? Must she suffer anymore? Oh, that again. Why don't you make a song out of that? Something like, Oh, tell me when Malcolm gave his name. Oh, say of my daughter, the child is changed. Stop that. I killed you. Oh, now, now. Six and stones can break my bones. But names will never hurt me. Oh, you're wrong. Names can hurt. Words can kill. Well, if they could, you wouldn't be standing there. Hate me. But don't hate me, now. We're all in this same boat together, Lana. Oh, no, we're not. Say what you want, do what you like, but tell me. Tell me for my child's sake, I've got to be sure. Forget it. Sweat it out. Do tell me if I have to claw your eyes out. If I have to twist your neck off. If I have to tell you. Tell me. 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 Tell I followed you home. I, I followed you here. I kept honking my car horn, but you wouldn't stop. Lila, what did you do to her? What, what did I do to her? <laughs> oh, I did what any red-blooded underdog would do. That's what. She came here with all the aces in her pocket to grind the last little bit of self-respect out of me. Oh, she's a legal wife and a kid's a legal kid. But why shouldn't she suffer like I'm doing? Six years ago, I married Malcolm. I turned myself inside out to make him happy because I loved him. That's right. Inside out. Because he wanted to change me. Oh, he dug Lila at first. But after a while, I started to hear about his, his ideal woman. She was not aggressive, not competitive, not forward, not an exhibitionist. Like Lila. <laughs> and I thought she was something in his imagination. <laughs> but there she stands. Little Miss Martha Muffet. The woman who knows a woman's place. <laughs> the shy angel. The quiet comforter. The little mother. The little creep. You thought I was Malcolm's ideal woman? Who told you that? Who was so unhappy with what he called my emasculation tactics that he ran away from me and killed himself in the hotel room? That's who. I hated you from the moment I saw you, Martha. 
Let's sign that autopsy oh, from the did we? Either of us. I'll sign it now. I located a doctor who said your husband was a patient of his. Malcolm had a very serious heart condition. I'm sure of what we'll find. Isn't nobody to blame? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you won. You won and I won, Lila. We both won. Because Malcolm lost. Lila was free. At last was free. Next time you walk down the street, look around you. On office buildings, schools, industrial plants, commercial buildings, and all types of buildings, you'll see the black and yellow fallout shelter sign. You've seen them before, but have you thought beyond the sign itself what that sign means to you? First, it means that the government has found space in that building that meets fallout shelter requirements. That from 50 to several thousand people could be sheltered there in an emergency. The sign means, too, that the shelter is or will be stocked with the basic food, medicine, sanitation supplies, as well as radiological monitoring equipment. There's a lot behind the shelter sign, the generosity of the building owner who is giving up valuable space as a public service, the cooperation of public-minded citizens who help move the supplies into the shelters, and the hard work of the local civil defense director in training people to run the shelters in case they're needed. Know where the fallout shelter signs are. Theater 5 has presented A Little Knowledge, written by Phyllis Coe and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Tony Darnay, Vicki Bola, Ethel Everett, and Paul McGrath. Audio engineer, Neil Post. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Blostovchenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Arthur. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production. Theater 5, two and a half hours of dramatic radio theater continues after weekend news.